Ready? Ready, ready, home. Good morning, Guam, and thanks for starting your day the KUAM way. I'm Chris Barnett. This is my Facebook Live show every Tuesday. We do group chat. Remember, every morning, uh, start your day the KUAM way with our starting lineup uh, lineup of <laughs> live Facebook shows. Okay, we have a morning meeting Monday and, of course, today, group chat. And we're here at the uh, big environmental conference uh, from Guam EPA. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, introduce you guys uh, your titles and uh, what you're doing here. My name is Kinshita Taitano. I'm the Air and Land Division Administrator with the Guam Environmental Protection Agency. I'm also the co-chair for the 30th Pacific Islands Environment Conference. Half a day, I'm Juliana Mendoza. I am the Environmental Health Specialist with the Safe Drinking Water Program with Guam Environmental Protection Agency. And I am also the co-chair for this year's Pacific Island Environmental Conference. And ma'am? Half a day, I'm Lindsay Lopez from Jacobs, and I'm here working with Guam EPA and assisting with the food waste assessment. So I'm here for the conference and for the assessment. Katrina, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the gist of this uh, conference. I know there's a lot of different uh, tracks going on over the next few days. Uh, but in a nutshell, if you could, uh, what's the point? The point is uh, helping build capacity where it is lacking or and helping enhance capacity where it exists here on Guam. What is that in English? In English, in English, well, as you pointed out, there we cover various tracks, and it's all about greening, um, greening growth in the uh, greening growth in the Pacific. That's really it. These tracks all support the concept of greening growth in the Pacific because we understand that that islands are perhaps the most vulnerable vulnerable groups, if you will, in terms of development. Why? Look at our land size. We, we, we have limited land space. We have fragile resources. We can't drive to the back 40, as they say in the mainland, to, 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 get what, to, to get assistance or to just move. This is home for us. So with that being said, the purpose of this conference is to provide information, build capacity in areas where we can develop smarter and greener. Well, there you go. Nice. Uh, and let's talk about the Safe Drinking Water Program and uh, kind of what you guys are uh, focusing in on this conference. Yes. Yeah, so um, we are focusing in part of the track is the green infrastructure where we focus on water. We do have some uh, dynamic speakers um, from the U.S. We have Paul Bishop, who is the uh, president and CEO of the Association of Water Certification, uh, where we certify uh, water and wastewater operators here in Guam uh, to run their public water systems. We we also have um, the PFAS uh, track. Uh, we have Ken Clue, um, Mr. Ken Clue. We also have Brandon Kernan, and we also have um, uh, oh, and we also have um, uh, Daryl Asterhout, who all three are from um, the U.S. Uh, they'll be talking about the PFAS uh, in their state. And um, okay, what's a PFAS? So. P PFAS, okay, so we have this new uh, chemical um, findings in our water. Um, it's not regulated yet, uh, but we are working towards uh, getting that regulated. US EPA is working on getting that regulated here. So for now, we, this is a new discovery of chemicals that we have to um, watch out for. And so because in, 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 in their state, they find a very high volume of PFAS in their water. So we uh, what will... What are some of the causes of, uh, or what, what are, what's the danger of PFAS? Well, the PFAS, uh, they're discovering it's um, from, uh, we find them in the wells. It's the, um, I'm sorry, it is the. Um, it's yeah, it's not sick coating, but really it's, it, the danger is, it's, I believe it's a carcinogen. Yeah, it's a carcinogen, it, it, and it can be found in the firefighting foams. I see. Yeah, and so yeah. It, then it percolates down to our groundwater, right. and so so they're finding that there, there are high PFAS in our in our in our in our wells. Well, and, and but only said, mm -hmm. and, and what she said too is it's not regulated, but right. but it is a, it's it's a what they call it an emerg, emerging con contaminant, and because it's not regulated, that there is a concern because a couple of things, how do you test for it? Because there's there's more than 22 right now. They're testing for about 22. Uh, variations of that particular chemical compound, but there's more than that. More importantly, they're only testing for what's in drinking water. They're not, there's, there's no standard for what's uh, contamination in the soil, contamination in sludge, contamination, I mean, outside of safe drinking water. 
So therein lies the problem. And I, and I understand too that but it does go airborne, once it, especially in those areas where they manufacture it in the mainland U.S. And, and, and I was talking to one attorney who was visiting on Guam. He said, you know, because he's actually, he has a case where, it's, where they were manufacturing it in one area. Concentrations are high, but across the river, they were finding it in the cattle. They were finding it in the fields. Why is that? Because it went airborne and it settled in another area. Sounds pretty alarming. Yes, it is. So we are, uh, we've done some studies here in Guam and we hope in the next couple of months that we will share that with, with the public. So, so no results yet? No, uh, no results yet. Yeah, so we're still in the stages of uh, getting all this information so we can share it with our, uh, with our senators and the concerns that we need to take uh, so we can uh, advise our USAPA folks how we can move forward with this. So what's your gut feeling, though? Do we have a PFAS problem in our, in our drinking water here in Guam? We don't know. That's why we're assessing. Yes. So let's talk about uh, who goes to this uh, conference. I've seen, you know, we saw Speaker Tienamonia Barnes, obviously uh, environmental stakeholders. Uh, what's right. the demo for this? My goodness. Well, we have everyone. You're right. So we have, we have uh, lawmakers. We have civil servants. Obviously, the, the military is here. We also have visitors from off-island. We have visitors from Asian Development Bank, another participant from the World Bank, and represent, representatives from the Washoe tribe and the Yaqui tribe, uh, Native Americans. This is... Uh, the demographics are, are, are incredible. We're very proud of, of this event and more importantly, we're glad that what we have to offer resonates very well with the general public. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, pretty amazing. And just the cross section of uh, different people that you talked about attending the conference. I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, let's talk about uh, what we have here. We're, we're talking okay. food waste, uh, zero waste and uh, Lindsay, go ahead. Thank you. So we've got a couple of topics here. These are all topics that are part of the conference. So there's zero waste, food waste, greening roadways, and composting. And the idea behind these kiosks is it's another area where people can learn on their own. So they can come up here between sessions. They can come to any of these topics, and then you select one. So I'll, let's shall we do food waste? Does that sound uh, sure? Yeah. Good to you? yeah. All right. So let's see. You go to food waste. Each of the topics has a slideshow that you run through at your own pace. So why does food waste matter? Goes through, talks about the scope of the problem. There's 1.3 metric billion metric tons of food that we waste as a, as a global community. Um, in North America, there's an estimated 30 to 40% of all the food available for human consumption is lost because of waste. It's pretty mind boggling actually. Right. So it goes through and, and you can see all the different environmental costs of food waste, the economic cost, social cost. There's a lot more slides we can look at. But then each, each of these topics also has a video. And these are videos that have been just available online. They talk about the problem in general. So you can play the video or you can take a quiz. Let's try uh, taking a quiz. All right. Oh, I mean, you know, going in cold. Are you going to take a quiz? Uh, are you yeah, try sure. This, try sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah. OK, so we're talking about food waste here. Which I hardly ever do. I'm proud to say, as you can tell, I eat all my food. So this is, this is a quiz that the World Wildlife Organization uh, Federation came up with. They've been doing a lot of work with hotels because, as you can imagine, hotels have a lot of tourists. There's a lot of potential food waste. And so the attention is on hotels um, and what you can do. And so they've been doing this... Um, this I guess this outreach effort so that people are learning more about you know hotel food waste how you can curb that a little bit and so there's tips that they've been bring, bring, bringing with a lot of different um, communities and sorry the internet is looking a little slow at the moment so it's still loading here and you see it a lot you know I host a lot of different events and there's always that last call for the buffet and you would see that there's just so much food left and you Correct. wonder like what do they do with it and there, you know, there are very successful programs that are able to take some of the food and they take it to organizations, food banks, food pantries, but you have to have the right kind of equipment in place so you can keep the food at the right temperature. Um, so here's our quiz. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, food is a hot commodity. If we, if we produce food that doesn't get eaten, what else is wasted? I'm going to say all of the above. Submit your answer. Well, look, what do you know? <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah, well, that was an it's easy one. With humility, your strong suit. Uh, you know, <laughs> that was really process All of right, elimination. Next one. 
What percent of food never gets eaten worldwide? I want to say 30 percent. Correct, again. Dang. Good batting average. Um, what food gets tossed the most? I'm going to say fruits, veggies, and tubers because we're always getting on people to eat their vegetables. 45%, almost half of all fruits, veggies, and tubers, which are like potatoes, are wasted each year. Uh, potatoes, store them in a dark place. I always have that problem. You get some potatoes, you're going to make potato salad or, you know, kadu or something, and you use a couple, you put a couple away, then when you go to use them later, they've got those, like, sprouts. They're already right. growing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. For those of you keeping score at home, Chris is three for three. Well, and here we go. <laughs> What food, when wasted, represents the biggest waste of energy? I would say, I want to say beef. I think I want to say beef. Oh, Have yes. you taken this quiz? No, before? I haven't. Come I haven't. On. I haven't. <laughs> I got a friend at a Guam EPA, Mr. Nick Lee. So thank you. Well, I just assumed it was beef because everyone always talks about how much uh, energy and resources it takes to raise right? cattle. Right. So Excellent. I figured, right. How much money does the average American spend on food per year that never makes it into meals? Oh, this is a tough one. I want to say 325 bucks. It's probably way higher, though. It is. I, I feel like I'm wrong. 456. God, okay. I don't want to play anymore. You're doing so good, I'm just though. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How much seafood goes to waste in the U.S.? Uh, 25%. Oh, close. Between 40 and 47% of seafood goes to waste in the U.S. Isn't that amazing? It is. Not in my house, though. We eat the fish, like, till there's nothing left but bones. Like, right. you can so put it in the museum. So it really depends on the, the region that you're from. This right. is all an average that's nationwide. Sure. Sure. But, you know, these are some of the findings that they found through their I mean, studies. still, 50% of, like, I was eating fried parrotfish, and one of my kids took up half of the parrotfish and just threw it away. I mean, that's a good example of, exactly. of this statistic. Or you you, you would go to the grocery store and you take half of your grocery bags and you just throw them in the trash, right? Right. right. Where does food go to waste in the U.S.? Um, in restaurants and at home. For sure. For sure. For sure got that right. Yes. More food is wasted at home and in restaurants than anywhere else along the supply chain. So let's uh, let's kind of look. The great thing about this, though, is that you have control over that, right? right. So yeah. you eat food every day, and you can take some simple tips to do a better job of not wasting food in the first place. And you know, it's as simple as the way that you buy food and shop for food, the way you store your food, the way you use your leftovers. And so they're they're very simple things that everybody can grasp onto and make a huge impact with food waste. And that's the reason that this topic is one of the very important ones that. Right is in this conference is part of their their assessment and um you know with together with small steps we can make a, a huge impact okay let me try and continue my huge impact okay. over here. what are good ways to reduce food waste i want to say all of the above write a shopping list and plan your meals i never do that i don't ever write a list but what i do do is i go uh, to the grocery store every couple days, right. so I just buy what I need for that Instead couple of days. Too much and right, because you end up throwing away. stuff, right. yeah. especially perishables. I mean, you know, um, so easy for fruits and veggies to go bad here. Yeah. Uh, that and I eat a lot of veggies, so I find myself every couple of days I'll go and I'll get broccoli or fifty out of seventy. What is that? Not bad. It's not bad. It's not too shabby. Right. Not too shabby. So am I hired or what? I think you did a great job. Yes. Yeah. So. Oops. Sorry. Wait, does, that, does that mean you can play uh, sports next year at a uh, DOE school? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> What's the GPA on that, bro? Right. <laughs> I don't even know. Thank my math teacher. <laughs> and let's uh, fold Conchita back in here. And no, 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 Yes. No, you're here. So we just did this whole thing on food waste. Yes. Uh, and how does this uh, relate to Guam? And is it a problem on Guam? Oh, you have to come to our session so we can tell you all the... Yeah. Spoiler the, alert. Yeah, that's right. Spoiler <laughs> alert. I'm not going to tell you. You need to come. People of Guam, you need to attend that session. And we will reveal all. And not only we will we'll share or disclose what we found out, but more importantly, where we're going next with this. And we've already, we're already in discussions with a couple of entities on Guam on 
what to do. We're even talking about the potential of a food recovery conference before the end of this year. Well, you heard it here first. Uh, I got to say, my own perspective, uh, growing up, yes, we did have food waste, but it, it was recycled in that we collected uh, the food that we didn't eat, and then uh, my grandparents raised pigs, so we would That's give right. that to the pig, uh, and then we would end up eating the pig uh, later. So Circular economy. Right, yeah. So this That's is not a new thing? But unfortunately, we've lost touch with the way things really should be done, right. and, and too many people have wasted they have taken advantage of food and the abundance of it and so now we've gotten into, into some terrible habits which we could learn from habits that have been practiced for centuries and we should be going back to those and How about yeah. the very basic we finish we finish what's on our plate right that's how i grew up so we mom was wait. correct when she said finish all that food don't get absolutely, up absolutely absolutely because they said you know my mother God rest her soul would say, think of all the poor people and you're just throwing that food away. My mom used to tell me that. I'm like, wait, we are poor. So, so there you go. So that <laughs> there's no room for wasting. Modern day uh, in my household, I still kind of practice the same thing. I don't raise any pigs, but uh, we have no shortage of chickens. So any leftovers that uh, we have, and it's usually um, crusts of bread, maybe a little bit of rice that went bad. Uh, every morning we go out and we, and you know, my mom, when she was staying with us, she would make a big uh, deal, like involving the kids, uh, go out and, you know, feed the chickens this uh, food waste. Is that kind of an acceptable way to cut down on it? I want to point your attention to this. Oh, here we go. There we go. So this is, you're, you're right on track. This is the EPA's food recovery hierarchy. And the way that it works is for, from the top is the most preferred option, working your way down. And so source reduction is the, is the best way. So just not wasting in the first place. But following that, you know, you want to heat, feed hungry people. And so people, you know, could take some of the leftover food, feed people. And under that is feeding animals. So you're, you know, just like you're talking about with chickens, pigs, it's a great way to, to use food that can't be fed to humans, um, followed by other industrial uses such as like anaerobic digestion and co-digestion at a wastewater treatment plant, and then composting, and then landfill. So you're right, feeding animals is an excellent thing to do with leftover food. And so we, we talked a little bit about uh, some of the food waste that goes on in restaurants, and you had mentioned that they need the right equipment to be able to keep that food uh, safe for human consumption. Right. What what kind of inroads are we making on that? Because uh, I mean, looking around, we have you know a homeless problem. There's no shortage of uh, people who are going hungry every day here in Guam. I can <laughs> see now you're 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 trying to have me disclose. Okay, I you am. I'm trying hard. Come, come, come to the, the session. session. Come to the session. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. I guess I'm not getting any more answers out of these guys, so you got to come to the session. When's the session? Thursday. Thursday, what time? Good question. <laughs> I think it's at uh, Thursday is at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Yes. We have one many sessions, but 1 o'clock, be there. Be there. There you go. Until then, He's gonna be there too. I'm going to be there because I want to find out. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> okay, and they don't want me to find out because, you know, everybody knows I can't keep a secret. So. eat your food. I'm, I've been eating my food, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, this has been a group chat. just want to thank uh, the ladies from Guam EPA and, of course, uh, Lindsay from uh, Jacobs. Uh, this conference is going on all week until when? <laughs> until Friday, Friday, after, uh, Friday morning, because that, we, we ended with field trips and a food waste assessment exercise. Come join the tour. Come join the tour. It'll be here at the Hyatt. Well, there you go. I know you guys need your exercise, even if it's a food waste exercise. Oh. Hey, <laughs> hey uh, thanks so much for watching. Again, this has been a group chat. My name is Chris Barnett. Adios. Adios. Thank you very much. Okay, Nick, you're fired, Nick. <laughs>